I've just had so many questions about, you know, everybody says that their religion's right, everybody else's is wrong. I spent some time on the Navajo Indian Reservation in Arizona, and they, what I consider to have fantastic religion, they they're into nature. But you see all the Christians and everybody else who only believes in one God is running around saying these people are wrong. Why are they wrong? That's I mean, we don't know that. We're not going to know until we're dead. And so how can people run around saying that you're totally wrong and they're living the best life that they can and they're doing what they consider right? The Muslim is not that intolerant. You see, the, what the Muslim says is this. Each one will be judged according to his or her opportunity and their background. God will not judge you and me on the same level. Everybody according to his light and knowledge. For example, to the Red Indians in the reservations. Whatever their concept, what opportunities did they have? There are millions in the world today who never heard the word Jesus. You know that. But the Christians say they'll all go to hell. This is what the Christians say. They never heard the word Jesus. There are millions who never heard the name Muhammad. They never heard the word Allah. The Muslim doesn't say he'll go to hell. That's the difference now. What the Muslim says is that each and every one will be judged according to his capacity, his understanding, his background. Did he have the opportunity of receiving the message? So he had. Could he see? He saw. Like vivid flashes of light, truth, he saw. And yet he rejected it. Why? For certain material reasons. What will people say? Now you join the Arabs now. You join the Iranians now. Is that your consideration? Or is it truth? So you will be judged. I will be judged. See? Jesus Christ, you say he is a God and he died for your sins. Now he says, now I reject the idea. Why do I reject it? What is the reason? Is it prejudice? I said, no, if I become a Christian, you know, my people will look down upon me. You know, my wife might divorce me. Is that the reason? So I'm doomed. So we are charitable in Islam. Maybe you never heard the name Muhammad. There are people, Christian priests. I had a few visiting, going to South Africa, Durban, Japanese, you know, priests with those dog collars on that I know is Christian, he's not a Shinto or a Buddhist. They were passing through Durban and somehow seeing that they were Japanese, I wanted to know where you come from. They said something like Brazil or Argentina, they were going from there back to home. So I asked them if they know anything about Islam. They never heard the word. They never heard the word Islam. I said, you know Islam? Mm -hmm. It's like Greek, I said, I don't know what you're talking about. I said, heard the name Muhammad, never heard it. Quran, never heard it. I said, now God can't be that unjust to him. So look, you, you heard about my message, Muhammad, and you didn't receive it, go to hell. No, God, God can't do that. They never heard the term. They never, so they will be judged on a different level. You know, Jimmy Swaggart puts it so beautifully, Swaggart, beautifully. He says, you see, the closer you are, you are to the light, we can see more flaws. Huh? You are away from the light, so many of your shortcomings are covered up. Closer to the light of truth, in other words. You see, if you are, you are being everything, every little blemish is shown. So if you had access to that light, then your responsibilities are getting <laughs> greater. You're listening to the man, and he said, look, this thing makes sense. It makes sense. How can somebody die for your sins? For example, you have a headache and I take the pill. You have AIDS and I take the injections. I said, does it make sense? So no, it's a most nonsensical idea that Adam and Eve, they sin, for which they're thrown out of the garden. I'm asking, is that not punishment enough? Is, not that, is that not enough punishment? You throw the man and his woman out of the garden for having disobeyed. No, it's not enough, says the Christian, that God now curses them. That from now on, you man, you must sweat for your bread and the woman must bear children in pain and suffering, labor. Is that not punishment enough? No, says the Christian. At the beginning of 1986, we were 4.8 billion on earth, human beings. And the Christian says, everybody goes to hell. Why? Because of the original sin, what Adam and Eve did. I am asking, did Eve ask you before eating the apple? He says, no. I said, did Adam ask you before eating the apple? You say, no. Then I said, how can God hold you responsible? Is he a lunatic? This God of ours, is he a lunatic? If a human being did that, we say, the guy is a lunatic. You know, making you responsible for what your great-grandfather did. He says, the guy is a lunatic. Is God a lunatic? He says, no. Then how can he make you responsible? 
Can you see? Now that's how the Muslim reasons. The Bible tells you clear cut language. The soul that sinneth it shall die. The one that sins is going to perish. And the Christian puts a full stop. I said there is no full stop there. There is a comma. Why don't you complete the sentence, the verse? He says, the soul that sinneth it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Father Adam sinned, his children are not responsible. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. He says, the righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. Whatever good thing the good man does, he gets his benefit, the reward. And the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Whatever you, the evil fellow does, he gets punished for it. Salvation, so, but if the wicked will turn, means repent from all the sins that he has committed and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. That is salvation. We Muslims, we say we believe in it, we accept it. He said, no, all your good deeds are like filthy rags. You will go to hell unless you believe in the blood of the Lord Jesus. So this dialogue carries on, discussion carries on. And overall, if you can see clearly that the Muslim has a point irrefutable point, logical point, based in his Bible, based in the words of Jesus, then you have to accept it. If you don't, now your condemnation will be sure. After that, after that. Verily, those who believe, and those who are Jews and Christians, and Sabians, whosoever believes in Allah, and the last day, and do righteous good deeds, for them their rewards are with their Lord and no fear shall be upon them, and they will not grieve. So this was, I think, really beautifully explained by Ahmed Didat. I'm still left with the question though, does this mean that salvation is guaranteed for a Muslim? And if so, if that's the case, then where does the teaching come from? that you know even if you're following um islam then you're you're not guaranteed heaven salvation according to uh, islam where does that now come into play where if you're not following the truth or the truth to your understanding fully and after you know being convinced in your own mind and everything and seeing clear signs for you as a person and if you're following that then why does that not guarantee you heaven now Ahmadidat didn't bring up this point I'm just saying it because I've heard it in other discussions that I've had with Muslims and I've also heard it in other uh, videos and that um, Prophet Muhammad even said that he doesn't know if he's guaranteed heaven but again if somebody's following the righteous path then why isn't that the guarantee she was asking about other people and their faith and saying that okay she she met the natives and they were into nature and everything and are they just going to be condemned you know uh, or you know other people other groups of people are they just going to be condemned he's saying no what it's based on is individually as a person and the light that has reached you and your understanding so it's an individual basis it's not necessarily exclusive to a particular religion i tend to agree with that that train of thought that everything is an individual basis and it's between us and god and we don't know exactly the outcome of somebody else because we don't know their train of thought. Uh, we can judge based on certain actions that another person may take, but in the end, really, it's only God that knows.